Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the CJRB Tala, or Tala, or something along those lines. Um, first off, though, before I go any further, I want to thank uh, Artisan Cutlery slash CJRB for sending these guys along. CJRB is the budget wing of Artisan Cutlery, much in the same way that We Knife has Civivi, Artisan now has uh, the CJRB line. I, I don't know what it stands for. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I think I asked and he didn't remember. But either way, it, it, it's a thing and it's their budget line. But um, basically, I met uh, met up with them at um, at uh, G the, the, the gathering, USN gathering, and I just looked through their table. I said, "This is interesting. This is interesting." And then they sent those guys along. I told them, as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, and it might be a gem or it might be junk. Um, they still sent it along, but nonetheless, we have to assume these are the very best quality controlled ones ever. Actually, although I know that some of these were the review samples that they had there at uh, at the show, and uh, we also have to assume that I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature of my review. But nevertheless, there you go. Next thing, let's do a size comparison, as always. Uh, let's go on ahead and pull out the uh, Spydeco PM2 uh, and the Spydeco Delica. So we can see here that size-wise, yeah, this is not a small knife here. Um, it is a relatively large knife, even, I would say. Here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. So again, not a tiny little piece. Um, and actually, here it is against the CJRB, uh, the Tiger over here. Like, Tiger is in the, 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 the type of forest rather than, like, uh, the eye of the Tiger. And uh, actually, here it is against another budget option, uh, the uh, Ontario Rat Number 1 and the uh, Civivi Praxis. So anyways, there you go. That has been size compared half to death. Um, and then finally, um, just like I said, this is the budget line for Artisan Cutlery. Um, I've been looking at some more of the Artisan stuff here lately, but um, this is from their budget department. And so, yeah, um, let's go on ahead and check out the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. This... Uh, very interesting little knife right here. So, on the good side, to start with, um, this guy is very textured. Oh, my God. I mean, if we take a close look at this texturing here... Holy texturing, Batman. That's that's a little bit nuts. Um, it, it is very, very, very textured on this guy. And um, you know what? That's a good thing at some level. That means that this knife is going to be good to go in the Vaseline factory. In addition to the clip providing some grip in here, the texturing, you're just not going anywhere on it. Um, and so honestly, I would argue that texturing is almost a little too effective. But if one of the things you're looking for is not going to slip out of the hand, this is a very, very nice choice. Next thing, one thing you can see here is that this has a contoured handle. If I kind of hold this guy up, up like this, you can see that the handle itself is not just flat. Um, and then some of the artisan stuff, uh, here we go, some of the CJRB stuff that is, um, this is just a flat handle, whereas this is actually contoured. Um, that can be nice ergonomically speaking. It just provides a little bit more, A, it provides a slightly more premium feel, um, very slightly, but it's, it's slight. Um, and uh, B, it also can provide a little bit nicer ergonomics for you uh, as you do it. So, um, that's a nice thing. Next thing, um, I have to say, this knife here is, um, actually not particularly vanilla. Um, it's very common for budget knives to feel very much like, oh, wow, okay, cool, you made a knife, okay, that looks a lot like a knife. Not that I'm saying anything, but yeah. Um, this guy, however, has a little bit more style with the harpoon on here, with the warning blade, with a little bit of... Uh, this feels like it was designed, whereas some of the budget knives just feel like they made something that looked knifey and they made it cheap. So I like that, and I think that for some people, this will be very appealing. Next thing, this also has a variety of color options. You're looking at a... Um, there's like a... I want to say a greenish... This is the blue version, in case that's not showing up well. Um, there's also a carbon fiber variant that's priced five bucks higher. Um, um, but it's nice that you've got a couple of different options in terms of coloration, and I imagine they'll have a couple of more because they're just swapping out the G10. Next thing, speaking of the price, 40 bucks. Now look, 40 bucks is that price range at which, um, A, there's a lot of competition these days. I mean, there were a lot of serious $40 knives these days. We are living in an amazing time for budget cutlery. Um, but this is a very, very nice value here. We're looking at D2 steel, which is great. We're looking at contour G10 here. We're looking at an action that is actually pretty decent. Honestly, this is a pretty solid little piece for that money. Um, I feel like that's a pretty good budget price point, And that's also a price point which I think a lot of people can deal with. Um, they, you know, you, certainly there are going to be people for whom 40 bucks even is a stretch on a pocket knife. But honestly, I think that's something that's not so hot. So I appreciate that they're hitting that kind of a style. 
Next thing, the action on this guy, and actually last thing on the good is the action on this guy is good. Um, I can flip this guy, no problem. Um, it has a very nice detent. It has a, although the action is a little bit grittier on the fall close, it's not bad at all. And I can do this with zero wrist action. I can do this just uh, light switch and this guy flips all day long. I never missed a flip in the carry. I never missed any damn thing. This is absolutely fine as a flipper. It has a very, very nice, frankly, an enjoyable flip in action, which I, I do appreciate very much. And so to me, all of that is the good here. It's got an impressive action. Um, it's 40 bucks, which is a pretty solid price point. It's got a couple of color options and carbon fiber. It's got a little bit more style than a lot of these budget knives come in with as a contoured handle, and the texturing on this guy is very effective, maybe even too effective. Um, so that, to me, is the good. On the great side, um, the blade on this is great. Um, and I say that in a couple of reasons. I mean, one thing is it's D2 steel. Um, D2 is one of those steels that I think is absolutely fine for everyday carry, and it's a pretty good budget steel choice these days. There are lots of budget steels out there, but D2 is a pretty good one. Um, it is also a uh, relatively thin stock. It's very common to see super thick stock on these kinds of knives, just because it's whatever they had left over at the factory factory, but this guy actually comes in pretty reasonably. I mean, it thins out pretty quickly as well. This is a relatively thin behind the edge knife, and especially if we look here at the tip of this guy, yeah, that thins right out. And so that's a beautiful thing. This actually cuts quite well. Um, it also has a, uh, a nice finish on it. You can see there's a little bit of reflectivity going on in there, which I appreciate. It's got a nice swedge to the top of it. This little bit of harpoon blade, as well as, frankly, just design touches. This little swedge makes a major difference for it. And, frankly, a warty-style utility blade can be a great thing, especially for these kinds of draw cuts going along a surface. You know, cutting out something on a cutting board, for instance, super easy with this guy. So, uh, you know, one of the biggest things I noticed carrying this guy is just like, damn, this is a good knife. And that's not something I universally feel. I should be universally feel it, but I don't always. And so the blade on this guy is absolutely great. This is a great blade, and I appreciate that very much. On the bad side, to start with the tip on this guy, a little bit thin. Now, look, I don't actually think that's a major problem for most people, because if you're using a folding knife in the way that it's sort of intended to be used... Uh, that should be fine. But anytime you're doing something like prying or something like that with your knife blade, this could be vulnerable to breaking off. So if you're really, really super hard duty use, you might appreciate something with a slightly thicker tip uh, rather than this guy, which thins right out. Um, so be careful there. Next thing, um, this is a completely a nitpick, but check, uh, check a look at the serial number here. This is J1901. That said, I looked on their website, and they had another one of them pictured that was, uh, I'm sorry, looked at a re retailer website. They had another one pictured, also J1901. So this is sort of uh, a fake serial number. Maybe they just think that means model number. Maybe that's a typo or something on there. But guys, you can't serialize something and not serialize it. Literally, that's what serial means. You do one after the other, after the other, after the other. I mean, they, they, no, 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 no. This is not the world's most important fraud so to speak, but it's kind of like, guys, come on, you had one job. So, that, that, no, at the very least, just lose the serial part. You'll have less text on the blade. Life is good. Nitpicking, but it's a thing. Next thing, finger choil. So, um, I don't know that this is a finger choil. Maybe this is just a sharpening choil. It's a good sharpening choil, that's for damn sure. And I probably could have put that in the grate under the blade. Um, however, if you use it as a finger choil, it is a little bit small. Even for my relatively small fingers, this guy is creepy. I can't really use this as a finger choil where I kind of want to. I sort of wish they had dug this out a little bit more and then allowed me to get in there with my finger and really do some actual holding because I think this guy would be ergonomically really great with a full on finger choil. Mind you, for 40 bucks, you can do that yourself. Get yourself a drum sander, get yourself a Dremel, get yourself a freaking file of, well, a heavy duty file. But nevertheless, you can do that yourself, but it just feels like something I shouldn't have to do myself. All right? right. Um, next thing, the harpoon on this guy. You know, harpoons are an interesting aesthetic touch. They have the disadvantage, though, of being wide in the pocket. You can see here that had this blade just sort of dropped straight down. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing or they shouldn't have done it, but note that this just makes this knife wider in the pocket overall than it would have otherwise been. Could have been quite slim at this level, but then this little decorative touch adds on a little thing. Now, mind you, this is going to be sitting up against your pocket, and although the pocket clip isn't particularly canted, 
you know, it's okay. Um, but nevertheless, this harpoon is definitely going to be pressing against the inside of your pocket there. That's also going to be pushing this flipper tab out into the middle of nowhere. And by the way, this flipper tab is quite the little pocket pecker here. Luckily, the edges on it are chamfered at least excessively, or uh, I'm sorry, acceptably. And of course, you could argue this is a safety feature, preventing the blade from being open beyond this point if you put a lock or something in there. Um, that's a bad safety feature. I'm joking. But nevertheless, um, this is definitely, um, that's a pocket peck and flip. Tab. And so the harpoon being wide will push this out and will make this guy more effectively peck on whatever's in your pocket all damn day long. So that's a thing. Next thing, the uh, clip on this guy. Clip is, uh, although it's fine, it works well, it's good to go in most regards, um, but it is a little bit high. It's uh, And that's not a bad thing for uh, putting it in your pocket, but it is a bad thing for uh, holding it in your hand. There is a big hot spot off of this clip. If I give this a little bit of grip here, you can see exactly where that clip lands. That's not a beautiful thing. Um, and so the clip is definitely a hot spot. It's also pretty uninspired. This clip really, I mean... Uh, let's be real here. We've seen about a bazillion clips like this before. This is an entirely different brand of knife. This is a uh, Ruwaiki Rake versus Artisan. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if they were sourcing their clips from someplace else, and that's not a demerit on them. Um, but nevertheless, that's uh, that, 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 it's kind of a vanilla clip, um, and it's also a pretty big hot spot. A wider clip tends to do a little bit better work if you've got something like that. Next thing, the um, speaking of hot spots, this liner over here. So I love the amount of lock bar access I get here. It's very easy to unlock this knife because as you can see here, and then a nice big scallop right down here. That makes it very easy to press this guy closed and shut the blade. However, that proud liner is a little tiny bit painful. As you're gripping onto this guy, you're going to be basically having this little area where this is sticking up and this is sticking up, and so you get a little bit of pain on the... F Look, is this like going to rip your finger apart? No, absolutely not, but I'm nitpicking. That's what I do, and that's something to keep in mind there. Um, next thing, the action on this guy. Um, This is actually... Okay, now, hold on, let me back up a second here. I remember a time, back in the day, where 40 bucks was the domain of, like, terrible freaking knives. Um, where there were just nothing worth a damn, and actions weren't good. Like, unassisted flippers weren't a thing at 40 bucks. This has an action that is, I think, by most standards, very, very nice. But there is a little bit of grit in that action. Um, there are little tiny dentings inside the liners there, and I, I suspect that may just be that the steel in the liners is a little softer. It is 100% functional. And you know what? The action is absolutely good to go. But that said, you know, that little bit of grittiness, I could do without. And, you know, it could well be that as you, uh, as you use the knife more, the liners will sort of indent their own bearing race, and that'll stop being an issue. But still, not necessarily a big fan of that grittiness in there. Then finally, the, probably the worst thing I can say about this guy, and that's not so bad, is that the, the knife is pretty heavy, and actually the balance is a little bit further back than I might like it to be. Um, uh, you can see here, well, actually you can't see here, but you could see in the disassembly that the internal, uh, that these liners here are stainless steel, and they are absolutely not skeletonized or punched through in any way. And so as a result, we end up with a knife that is 4.87 ounces for a little bit under a three and a half right actually about three and a half inches on the nose. That's a heavier knife than some. In many ways, that feels like with the CJRB line, that feels like Artisan, that's where they're cutting the corner, so to speak, is in making knives that are a little bit heavier than some. Um, mind you, that's not uncommon, and I'm not really dissing on it, but that's sort of the biggest demerit that this guy has, uh, short of one easy-to-fix little issue in the future. So um, this guy is pretty heavy. It's uh, surprisingly heavy, and that's not something I love. And so uh, to me, all of that is the baddest, that it's heavy. The action is a little bit gritty, but that's really serious, like 40 bucks, Nick. Shut the heck up. Um, it is uh, got the proud liner in the clip that are hot spots here. The uh, harpoon is a bit wide in the pocket. The uh, flipper tab is definitely sticking way out there, pocket pecking. Finger choil is not really a finger choil. The serial number isn't really a serial number. And the tip is a little bit thin, but as long as you're using your knife reasonably, that shouldn't be an issue. On the ugly front, there is only one ugly issue here, and it's a relatively easy fix. But um, uh, in a lot of great knives, so uh, here's a great knife. Here's a good knife. What you can see is that they put some sort of a flat pad for the clip to ride on, which allows the knife, as you slide this into your pocket, um, the, the material of your, fa of your pocket, that is, is not going to be torn up by the contact with the under texture. That's not generally a problem if you've got, like, for instance, a smooth steel or titanium underneath there. Um, but it is definitely a problem when you have, say, heavily textured G10. And so this heavily textured G10 here is just sitting underneath this clip, and every time you put it in and out of your pocket, I feel 
feel my pockets crying out a little bit. This is the equ pocket equivalent of like torture. I, I I took this guy out in the morning and my pockets just like, no, Nick, please, no, we'll tell you everything. We know where the shirts are hidden. I don't know what secrets pants have. But nevertheless, um, this definitely is a torture device for pockets there. This is easy enough to fix. You would be able to uh, sand that down a little bit, although sanding G10 is serious business. Do, you know, uh, use precautions, use a respirator of some variety, do it underwater, whatever. But nevertheless, you could sand that down and make that less of an issue. And frankly, the, the texture itself is almost a little bit much. For some people, I can see them loving it. But, you know, if this were a keeper, if this were a knife I wanted to modify to my own feelings, I would definitely widen out this choil a little bit and sand that that texturing down just a bit. Just, uh, you know, take it down, you know, 20% or something like that. That would both, it, that would both, that would both make it easier to clip into the pocket and it would make it a little bit nicer on the, uh, well, LBHs over here on the, on the hands. So um, that's definitely uh, an ugly issue. I would like to see some little flat patch right here and right here. Of course, with an ambidextrous clip, which you could, uh, by the way, call as a good, um, it, it's a little more frustrating, but still, you shouldn't have texturing directly under the clip. Not a great thing. So to me, at least, that's what's ugly here is the texturing under the clip. Um, final conclusions, though. I've been nitpicking this little guy hard, but honestly, it's a fine little knife. These, we are in this wonderful time in the knife world where I'm able to say things like, wow, the action's a little gritty in this unassisted frame or uh, flipper. Um, and, and it'd be credible, right? Well, okay, some people don't find it credible, but still, um, you know, and it to be a real thing, right? Um, for 40 bucks, we used to be getting out of crap, and now we're getting this. And this is a really fine, solid little piece. It's got a good handle, it's got good style, good choices, a great price, a great action. It's got a pretty awesome blade, actually. I mean, it's not perfect, absolutely, with some weird details, a few odd spots, a pocket peck, or an action that's... For, for 40 bucks, shut up, Nick. Um, it's a pretty heavy weight, and there's a little more texturing than maybe you want, especially under the clip. Um, it's not going to blow people away if you're used to the higher end. If you have been spending your entire life in Shirogorov territory, so to speak, the... Um well, the CJRB here ain't going to be doing it for you, really. It's it's a fine piece, but it's it's firmly a budget piece. But that doesn't make it bad in any way, shape, or form. This is a knife that if I had a lifetime supply of these just to hand out to random jackasses, like just carry one of these around with me at all times, and anytime I see an M-Tech in somebody's pocket, anytime I see a really terrible freaking, you know, one of those gas station specials, I could just hand this over to them, and they'd be like, oh... Thank you. That's a huge improvement. I'd be like, you're welcome. It is. Um, that'd be a really cocky thing to say, but still, you know what I'm saying here. It would be a very solid daily choice for a variety of people. It's a knife I could hand to them. I wouldn't worry about safety. I wouldn't worry about anything. And they'd probably love it for the rest of their damn life. Little style. And you know what? It's cheap enough to be in range for a lot of people. So my ultimate conclusion on this guy is, yeah, it's not perfect, but you know what? It's damn good. And for the price point, it's really, it's a pretty solid option. I mean, there are lots of knives to recommend the Rat 2, or I'm sorry, the Rat 1 and D2. See, I, I, I'm still mixing them up. Rat 1 and D2, the Civivi, um, uh, the Praxis, Cut, uh, Rat, not Cut Jack. Uh, well, actually, Steel Wheel Cut Jack, too, for that matter. Um, but there were a bunch of other options out there uh, from this, but this is a pretty decent choice. And so, although many knives at this uh, price point stand tall, if you're in love with the design, I can definitely see this one standing taller. Okay, anyways, there you go. Hope this is interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.